partners. And we thank our partners for coming, not only themselves, but for the thousands of customers they bring to VMworld each and every year. This year, we have 20 people who have been to all 12 VMworlds since we started. And they're sitting right down here in the audience, and I'd like to ask Well, actually, we have 21, because I, too, have been to all 12. And I remember, thank you, I rem thank you. And I remember that first event in San Diego when we had all of 1,200 people there. And we thought we were on top of the world. And if we were really thought leaders, I'd say we were in the clouds. And at that event, we laid out a vision a vision to transform the data center forever and virtualize 100% of the workloads. And I will tell you, together, there is no doubt, collectively, we have transformed the data center forever. And we've changed the lives of thousands, tens of thousands of IT professionals. At VMware, we're not just out to transform and change the lives of IT professionals. We also seek to change the lives of many others along the way. And we do this through what we call the VMware Foundation. And it's built on a philosophy of citizens' philanthropy, where individuals are empowered to choose how and where they give back to the communities in which they work, live, and play. And we're asking you to join our community this week to give back. So let me tell you how you can do that. As many of you came down the escalators this morning, you saw this area, we call it Destination Give Back. And we're asking you to choose one of four causes that best represents and has meaning to you. Those four causes are children, education, health, and the environment. And all you need to do is take a photo of yourself or take a photo of a cause that means the most to you. Post it to Instagram. together 2015. Let's start and talk about this year's theme, Ready for Any. And let me ask a simple question. Are you ready for any? Well, whether you've been with VMware for a long time or you're new to us, we've all been on a journey. And as we've gone on this journey, VMware has started to really understand the world in which you're living and the challenges you are facing. Since last VMworld, we have met with thousands of customers all around the world. And no matter who we meet, no matter where they are, no matter where we go, we see and hear very similar challenges. All of you are always asked to go faster. You're not going fast enough. You're asked to continue to be more innovative and actually stay ahead of the curve. You're asked to drive employee and human capital productivity and make sure that you do it not only in IT but across the companies. And we all know you're not getting an increase in headcount. You're asked to be more agile and try to be more responsive to the line of business and the developers. Security. Even when you think you have everything secure enough, they come and say, make it more secure. And cost. We know that you're asked each and every day to reduce your cost. Not only reduce your cost, but you're actually now being asked to help drive top line revenue growth. And the demands we see on you are increasing, and they're increasing each and every day. But the opportunities are also groundbreaking. So what if, what if we could more easily address these challenges and focus on those big groundbreaking opportunities. What if at VMworld 2015, we could enable you to run, build, deliver, and secure any application, anytime, any place? Our goal at VMworld this year is to make sure you're ready for any, ready for any challenge or business opportunity that lies ahead to enable you here at VMworld to do four things. The first, run. 
to be able to run a true hybrid cloud platform and take advantage of the full power of the software-defined data center to run any application. Build, but it's not just build, it's about build and embrace traditional applications, containers, and cloud-native technologies to transform your business. Deliver. Deliver any application on any device with our industry-leading end-user computing solutions. And last, but clearly not least, secure. We need to be ready to accelerate both networking and security from the data center all the way to the device. Now, we at VMware have a long-standing commitment of providing all of you with freedom, flexibility, and choice. In fact, it's woven deep into the DNA of our company, and it's woven into everything we do, we build and deliver to you in our ecosystem. All you need to do to see evidence of this is go to the Solutions Exchange, where you'll see hundreds of companies that are now part of our ecosystem. In fact, one could say VMware doesn't just have an ecosystem or hasn't built an ecosystem, that we actually created an entire economy. Think about VMware being a platform company, a platform company in the data center that needs to give you freedom and flexibility and choice to go southbound and northbound. Southbound to interface and run on any hardware platform you desire and go northbound to support any operating system or application. Think about any device. You all need to give your employees choice of device they want to use to get access to applications, whether it's a desktop, a virtual desktop, it's a smartphone or a tablet. We also understand that many of you want to leverage the richness of the APIs on top of technologies like OpenStack, which is exactly why at VMworld last year, we introduced the VMware integrated OpenStack solution that runs right on top of your existing infrastructures and now containers. And you'll hear today that VMware has a two-pronged approach to supporting containers. First, on your existing infrastructure, infrastructure, and second, how you can build an entirely new infrastructure stack to support containers and cloud-native applications. And you'll hear more about that this morning. Now, in the end, we want to look at you and say, you choose the technology, you choose the architecture, you choose the platform, you choose the app, you choose the device, and we are here to work and engage with you. And we believe at VMware the best way to deliver freedom, flexibility, and choice is to a one cloud, any application, any device architecture. Now let's quickly take a look at each of these, starting with one cloud. When we talk about one cloud, we don't literally mean you have one homogeneous cloud. What we mean is we want to partner with you to give you a seamless integration between your private cloud, your public cloud or public clouds, or if you're running a managed service cloud. In the end, we believe that this seamless integration that we can bring to you will create what we call a unified hybrid cloud. And the unified hybrid cloud brings tremendous value and benefit to both IT as well as your customers. Let's look at it through your eyes as IT. You can now operate as if you're managing one logical cloud and use a single cloud management platform to automate the delivery of all of your applications, both on-premise and off-premise. For your users, users being your line of business or the developers, the distinction between on-premise IT and off-premise IT is now eliminated. So what this gives us the ability to do is to build, run, or develop any application, whether on-premise or off-premise, and seamlessly federate those workloads back and forth. And by doing that, it gives us the ability to showcase and leverage powerful infrastructure technology like NSX, providing a common security layer on-premise and off-premise. In the end, we do not believe there is anyone in the industry that can deliver as powerful of a unified hybrid cloud platform as VMware. 
Now in IT, we often say it's not just about the infrastructure. In fact, we often say it's all about the app. Everything starts and stops with the application, which is why we need to continue to support traditional applications. In fact, it's what runs all of our businesses today. But we also know at the same time, application development and delivery models are changing and evolving and doing it faster than ever, which is why we need to support new technologies both today and tomorrow, like cloud native applications. And VMware is here today to enable you to run a unified platform supporting traditional applications, cloud native applications, containers, and open source technologies. Now we all know that an app is meaningless without a device to get access to it anytime, anywhere. Today we know our users have higher expectations than ever. They want to move from device to device. And as they move from device to device, they want to be able to get access to their content and applications in the exact same way. While we at IT need to make sure everything is secure, all the way from the data center to the application. VMware's business mobility solutions enable the consumption of both applications and content on any device, all while allowing you to continue to manage it effectively and securely. When we bring this all together, we start to see the formation of what we believe is the architecture for IT, and we're sharing that vision with you here at VMworld 2015. And it starts with that notion of one cloud, a unified hybrid cloud platform that spans on-premise and off-premise and managed clouds. And we believe the only way to effectively and scalably run a hybrid cloud is through a software-defined data center architecture. This software-defined data center architecture can be built on and run one of three ways. First, you can decide to build it on your own or you can leverage converged infrastructure like VCE's VBlock or VXBlock architectures, or you can run it on top of a hyper-converged infrastructure, and you can manage all of the software-defined data center assets and hardware simultaneously with something Raghu will speak about next called Evo, SDDC Manager. That infrastructure needs to be scalable, reliable, and secure to support both traditional applications and cloud-native applications, and those applications are only as good as the users who get access to them, leveraging any device in a very, very secure way. So let me give you a few examples of how VMware is partnering with our different customers to take advantage of this one cloud, any application, any device architecture, starting with an automobile man manufacturer who can actually monitor and tune their customers' cars remotely in real time. Or the deep partnerships we're forming with service providers and telco companies who can now bring new technologies like voice over LT and 4G and other new services to market extremely fast leveraging VMware's powerful network function virtualization solutions or an education system where we're securely allowing teachers, students, and parents all to get access to curriculum and content in a very secure way. And we're allowing that to expand outside of their local districts and local school systems and engage on a global basis in a very seamless way securely to share, about, share projects that they can build upon throughout the world. We are helping kids save, shape the future today. One of my favorite, a pharmaceutical company, 120 years old, of course they have a big legacy data center, but they couldn't move fast enough to the new world. So they decided to build a software-defined data center and stuff, stand up an entire new stack. And the very first application they put on it was nothing other than SAP a mission-critical application, and after that, they're now migrating over 450 applications a month. In less than one year, this pharmaceutical company completely transformed how they run, build, and deliver, and secure their applications in, and their infrastructure. Now, to bring this to life this morning, I'm gonna introduce a customer and partner on stage. This individual literally had to survive the biggest fight of his professional career. 
and is leading not only IT transformation across his company, but across an entire industry. And I'd like to, before I introduce this gentleman to stage, run a short video to introduce Direct TV. It used to be so simple. You sat down and watched whatever was on TV. But today's viewers demand a lot more from their TV entertainment providers. Direct TV is the nation's number one satellite TV content provider. Ranked number one in customer satisfaction for 15 years in a row. And in a complicated world of content delivery, making their unprecedented standard of service and reliability seem, well, simple. But of course, it isn't. Please join me in welcoming to stage Executive Vice President and CIO of DirecTV, Mike Benson. Mike. Good morning, Mike. How are Thanks you? Thanks for joining me. Thank you. Thanks for joining a few of your friends here. Oh, oh, just a few. Just a few. And all of them are DirecTV customers. Great. I like that idea. So Mike, so what are some of the business challenges and opportunities and customer demands uh, you're facing today and how are you trying to solve them? So in a pay TV environment, we're a very mature marketplace. Um, challenges with competitors, competitors going after market share, it's very challenging for us. And then you have new entries coming into the marketplace like Netflix and Hulu, they're over the top capabilities that adds additional pressure to the marketplace. And then we have this other phenomenon that happens about three to five times a year where demand of our IT services just bursts. Mm -hmm. And those events that take place are very challenging not only to our IT organization but to the whole organization as a whole. And now we have the acquisition or the merger with AT&T and that adds additional pressure on the fact that we now are selling more and more of our capabilities in all the retail stores out there within AT&T. We're also having to deal with every, every device, mobile apps, whether that's a tablet or a phone, and providing streaming content out there. That's great. So Mike, I just had the opportunity to share with our audience VMware's vision for one cloud, any app, any device. How does this map to the vision and priorities and strategy you're laying out within in DirecTV? Well, Carl, it's pretty consistent with our long-term strategy as well and demands that we've talked about just a minute ago. And, and we've been partnering with VMware now since 2008, which has been really fabulous Thank for you. us. Thank you. And, and you know, we've been using a hybrid cloud philosophy and approach, um, at least for the five or six years that um, we've been on this journey. Some of that um, cloud capability is on-prem, some of that cloud um, is out on the, in, in out, out, not in our, our environment, but out in the public. And then we do some, some other capabilities of a hybrid type of capability. Mm -hmm. And that's done real well for us. And we're, what we're trying to do is just put more and more of our customers' content and capabilities closer to our customers out there on the perimeter as we go. And so this whole unified cloud um, is our strategy. That's great. So Mike, just a minute ago, you talked about this sudden burst in capacity that happens three to five times a year. And I must admit, I was one of those people who spent $99 on the fight of the century between Mayweather and Pacquiao. And my experience was flawless. How were you able to manage and deliver such a great experience for your clients? So I'll say one thing, it was, you know, we were very successful, but I don't think most people would think that the fight was that great of a fight. But anyways, in early April... But it, but it was worth donating to yes, Direct TV. Yes, we liked that. <laughs> liked that real well. But in early April, you know, I challenged my team to go look at preparing uh, volumes, double the volumes that we thought they were going to be. And you did this in April? Early April. Fights May. Yes, May one 2nd. Month. One second, one month. And so... They went and took that information with huge pressures on us trying to deliver. They put together a strategy and came back and said they could do it. Now, we had a lot of people that night and during that day monitoring this and making sure we could pull this off and we were very successful in doing that. But we, what we did, we leveraged the VMware virtualization technologies and the NSX to help us do that. And primarily was the whole idea of the network side of this, which was more challenging to us in the past. Yeah. So it was very good though, very successful. So Mike, let's double click. How did you end up selecting NSX as a key enabler for this mega fight? 
So we've been on this journey for virtualizing um, our data centers and, and putting things out in the cloud for some time. And so we started out virtualizing servers, then we went to storage, and then we went to, then the next challenge for us was how do you do that eliminate that bottleneck that you had from a network perspective. Mm -hmm. And so we use NSX to allow us to move from a manual, manual rigid um, delivery to a more software friendly delivery and we can put things out there. And then on top of that, it added better security as well in that space. So next week is another big season and I guess you'll see a big spike as the NFL season kicks off. How are you leveraging your findings and learnings from the mega fight to address the NFL season starting next week? So Carl, we've been, um, providing the NFL for 21 years. So we have exclusive rights with the NFL. We've had it for 21 years. It's been very um, profitable for us and it makes our customers sticky with us, which we, we love. But the demands are even greater every year. Every year we have challenges the first couple weeks trying to make sure we get everything working correctly. And we go through a lot of rehearsals well in advance of this. In fact, the teams are working on them for the past month in solving that. But those demands are very challenging. And so now we even have more, more challenges in the fact that we are have the, with the AT&T merger and now providing more services and capabilities out there. So what we did is we took the lessons we learned from the fight and we apply them to the NFL season this year. So this is probably our first year we're gonna see this um, new capability that we've had in the past, which, which should help us tremendously. So this season is critical to us, especially with AT&T. There's more demands, more devices, more capabilities that we put out there. We're um, doing more fantasy football capabilities, more stats out there. So more things that the consumer is going to interact with. That's great, Mike. So before we let you go this morning, um, what are some of your priorities, let's say over the next five years, that you're focused on to help continue to drive transformation across not only DirecTV, but the entire broadcast industry? So the three things that we are focused on is cloud, mobility slash digital, and big data. You know, our biggest challenge is to support the vision of mobilizing every aspect of our business, devices anywhere, anytime, anyplace. And AT&T is really on the forefront of that. Then we have the broadband software definition networks that we're trying to do. We're trying to move away from traditional networks that are hardware driven to be more leveraging software defined solutions in that space. And then our expectations are with VMware to be a great partnership with that. So those are kind of the things that we have going in that from a cloud perspective and digital is big to us and, and then big data, we will take that big data and that information we get from our users, apply that from how we better service them and give them a better experience. Well, Mike, we can't thank you enough for participating in VMworld and more importantly, the partnership we have between DirecTV and VMware. Thank you for your time and we hope you get to enjoy the rest of the show. Carl, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you, Mike. I'm Mike Benson. And I'm quite sure you'll hear many more examples from both customers and partners throughout this week, just like Mike's story. Now let me give you a sneak preview of what you'll hear in the keynotes this morning and then again tomorrow morning. The next session we'll talk about run and how we can enable you to truly run a unified hybrid cloud platform and as I said earlier, take advantage of the full power of the software defined data center to run any application that you so desire. We'll follow that up and we'll have a drill down into how you can build and embrace traditional applications, containers, and cloud native technologies to support and transform your business going forward. Tomorrow morning, we'll have an exciting presentation from Sanjay Poonen and Noah Wassimer, who will talk about VMware's vision of allowing all of you to look at your customers and say, you can run any application on any device, and you in IT can make sure it's secure by leveraging VMware's end user computing innovations that we continue to bring to market. And then we're going to wrap up the first part of the general session tomorrow morning talking about security and networking and how we collectively can come together and secure the data center in ways that have never been imagined in the past. Not only the data center, but all the way to the device. And then our closing keynote tomorrow morning is going to be from Pat Gelsinger. VMware's Chief Executive Officer, and he will give you his perspective on the five imperatives for digital business, and he'll ask each of us 
the following question. What do we, as business leaders and IT leaders, need to be prepared for in order to stay ahead over the next five years? I promise you, you're not going to want to miss this powerful presentation from Pat. In closing my session this morning, I want to start where I began and ask a question. Are you ready for any? I would say that individually, we're probably not, but together, we are absolutely ready for any. Enjoy VMworld 2015 and enjoy the rest of the morning. Thank you. Business is changing fast and the competition fierce. These successful companies depend on unified hybrid cloud services that let them innovate like a startup and deliver like an enterprise. Heartland provides an ever increasing amount of products and services, but our core is credit card processing where we process millions of transactions a day. Every single one of the transactions that we process runs on VMware. One of the things I really like about VMware is their cloud management suite and how you can manage a public and a private cloud in the same pane of glass. It really improves our flexibility, improves our agility, and really speeds up the delivery of our services to our customers. CenturyLink offers a broad portfolio of managed services and infrastructure services. Working with VMware, what we can do is we can extend those services to meet our clients' needs where they are today and where they want to go in the future. IHG's data center model really hinges on being able to use a hybrid model uh, that really gives us the flexibility to use our own bare metal but within the data center to encompass both private cloud and public cloud. VMware offers VIF the chance to make its vision possible, and that is global education for all. We have to have the ability to reach 4 million teachers across the U.S. and beyond, and then connect them with teachers all around the world. vCloud gives us an unbelievable opportunity to scale globally, to add security features, to ensure a great user interactivity, and to ensure that we have the capacity to grow even larger. The Center would not be able to deliver what the business is asking of IT without the tools that we get from VMware today. Because now we have the automation tools that come with the vCloud suite, we now have an 85% reduction in infrastructure utilization, in time to deploy. It's just been a tremendous savings in, in every dimension. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome VMware's Executive Vice President and General Manager, Cloud Services, Bill Fathers. Good morning, VMworld. Thank you. Last year, you'll remember we talked about the amazing pace and accelerating pace of public cloud adoption. Right now, over 90% of you now have workloads deployed in the public cloud. You'll also remember we said to get those benefits faster with less risk and, by, and to get more flexibility, you should embrace a hybrid strategy. You just heard Carl talk about VMware's unified hybrid cloud strategy. Now, you might be thinking, what exactly do you mean by hybrid? Is this just as basic as connecting a SaaS application into an existing environment? No. It's a much more long-range mission. It's a more fun, it reflects a more fundamental shift in the application deployment patterns that we're seeing as you start to embrace the public cloud. Put practically, hybrid cloud using a combination of private cloud, public cloud based on our software-defined data center technology represents a way to solve some of the toughest challenges today that you're facing. Now, the good news is that thousands of you are already embracing this hybrid strategy and getting great results from doing so. So how are you doing that? Well, what I'd like to do is take advantage of the fact that I have a fantastic job. Every week, I get to see hundreds of examples of how clients are really starting to embrace the cloud. And there's three dominant use cases that we see. Disaster recovery, using the cloud to protect your crown jewels, your mission-critical applications. 
Application scaling, you just heard a fantastic example from uh, one of our strategic clients, looking to get more performance or availability from your application, and mobile applications, where you're looking to expose your core business processes to your customers. Now, disaster recovery, frankly, is a use case that you have nailed. You've absolutely cracked it. And you'll see VMware continue to evolve our portfolio of offerings that we offer directly and through our vCloud Air network uh, of partners. Uh, and you'll see us also in, uh, start to do things like make Site Recovery Manager available as a cloud-based offering. You've absolutely nailed it, so I don't need to spend much time there. But these next two use cases are where we're seeing this emerging trend of how you're deploying applications differently. So let me dive straight in and talk about application scaling. Latency kills revenues. It doesn't matter what business you're in. You could be getting ready for a pay-per-view fight. You could be driving an e-commerce application. You could be looking to do a trouble ticketing system or a hotel reservation system. Milliseconds matter. And as many of you have tried to scale out your existing application that you've built on vSphere into a third-party public cloud, you discovered it's both complex and very expensive. Now, why is that? Well, it's because there's a huge bottleneck. And the bottleneck is networking, which makes sense as you try and scale an existing application into a third-party cloud that's an entirely different network environment. Now, this is one of the hardest problems that we have solved. So the VMware Unified Hybrid Cloud Platform allows you to extend your entire network architecture into the cloud. So what you may say? Well, the so what is twofold. Firstly, your application that you're trying to scale out to hit the need for peak capacity can now look at the combined pool of infrastructure resource in your private and public clouds as a single pool of resource. You can also do some really cool things, and we're actually going to show you this in a few minutes. You can also, uh, it gives you a great deal of flexibility to see how you move the application, and you can also have security policies that follow the application wherever it resides. So that means you can maintain things like compliance. And again, only VMware has delivered this. Next, I wanna talk about mobile applications. These are the kind of applications that are fueling the digital business. For most of these, you're exposing your systems of engagement, to use some jargon. And some of the mobile applications being de deployed are amazingly disruptive. You're seeing entire industries being disrupted by these kind of mobile applications. And you're in San Francisco. This is the home of mobile applications. We've, we've innovated, we've disrupted micro-rental of property, micro-rental of vehicles, micro-rental of pets. That's the rental of pets for a short period of time, not the rental of microscopic animals. We went a bit crazy on that one. I want to reserve a camel for Monday. Wait, it's half price camels on Tuesday. No, no. So it, despite them having gone a bit far, these applications are profoundly changing a number of industries. But the problem is, is that deploying these mobile applications can be complicated and extremely different to architects and build. Why is that? Well, very often you're deploying a mobile application in the public cloud, but it needs to link back to existing mission-critical applications that live on-premises or in a private cloud environment. And this requires you to seriously think about the ways in which you're doing things like your network architecture and your data residency, because of course you're trying to protect some of the sensitive data and maintain all of your compliance standards while you expose them through to a mobile application in the public cloud. So this is another of the really hard problems that the VMware Unified Hybrid Cloud Platform has solved. And Carl also talked about the need to make sure that your end customers, the developers, see this as a platform they want to develop net new applications. And again, you'll see VMware make a broader and broader range of application services available on this hybrid platform for things like mobile backend as a service, platform services from folks like Cloud Foundry, database service offerings from the broad spectrum, and then of course, all of the storage services that you need to meet the needs of the applications you're now developing. So you can begin to see there's this very rapid evolution of the way you're deploying applications. We're calling this new model hybrid applications, with an application that's spanning both the public and private clouds. This, folks, is the future. 
The hybrid application, if you think about it, drives the need for very close integration between your on-premises or private and public cloud environments. Now, the good news is that VMware is well ahead of the curve in terms of anticipating the tough challenges that hybrid apps would present to you and solving them. Now, the reason for that is because an esteemed colleague of mine who leads all of our R&D efforts in the software-defined data center world anticipated this trend several years ago. So I'm going to let him explain a little bit more about how our hybrid platform solves many of these hard integration challenges for you. So it's with my great pleasure I'd like to introduce our Executive Vice President and General Manager of our SDDC division, Mr. Raghu Raghuram. Thank you, Bill. Good morning, and welcome to VMworld 2015. Now, I get to work with a fantastic engineering team at VMware. They are inspired every day by the challenge of delivering the best infrastructure for all your applications. Now, I've been at VMware for over 12 years, and in these 12 years, we've seen a tremendous evolution in how applications are constructed and architected. In the early days of VMware, applications were mostly confined to a single server. So through server virtualization, you could deliver the best infrastructure for these applications. Along the way, <coughs> applications became more complex. They spread out across the data center. Business logic and data distributed across servers tied together by network services and storage services. We created the software-defined data center by virtualizing network and storage and compute to deliver the best infrastructure for these applications. Now, as Bill just said, application patterns are evolving yet again. We are seeing the rise of the hybrid application, where a part of the application is running in the public cloud, a part of the application is running in the private cloud. Now, how do you deliver the best infrastructure for these hybrid applications? It's clearly not sufficient just to build a private cloud. It's clearly not sufficient just to build a public cloud. You need both, but you need more. You need a layer of common networking and a management, a networking and a management backplane that makes one a seamless extension of the other. If you do that, you've got yourself a unified hybrid cloud platform. The best infrastructure for an hybrid application is a unified hybrid cloud. Now, to help you build a unified hybrid cloud, we are investing in three major areas. The first one is to simplify the private cloud. Now, we can all agree that building a private cloud and operating it on top of traditional infrastructure is very complex and hard. With the software-defined data center, we are able to dramatically simplify this by turning infrastructure into software. So now you can offer a private cloud to your customers that has the agility and the economics and the ease of consumption comparable to the public cloud. The second area of investment is extend. Now think about the hybrid application we just talked about a minute ago. So you've got some application components running on servers in the middle of your corporate data center you got some application components running in the middle of your service provider data center, the cloud, and you got to connect all of these together into a single logical network and maintain that network even as these applications move around in their respective data centers. And you got to do this for hundreds of hybrid applications. This is a complex networking problem. But that's not all. In addition, you got to be able to solve, you require network virtualization to solve this problem, obviously. But in addition, you need a hybrid networking layer that can simplify the task of routing 
accelerating encrypting and transporting the packets back and forth. And then on top of that, you need a set of management tools that allow you to manage these applications whichever, wherever they are located. So that how you deploy your applications now becomes a matter of business choice, not driven by architectural constraint. The third area of investment is reach. Building out a public cloud service with a rich set of application services, both from VMware and from our partners, so that your end users can build applications that can literally reach millions of end users and devices across the globe. Now, as you might have seen from the press releases today, we are making exciting progress across all of these areas. To bring us up to date on some of these latest things we are building, let me bring up one of our senior engineering leaders, Yan Bing Lee. Good morning, VMworld. I have an incredible job at VMware. I have two bosses. I work for Bill and Raghu at the same time. So working for both of them at the same time allow me to have a unique perspective about you know, how we live and breathe the hybrid world and how our private and public cloud solution come together as a unified hybrid cloud. So let me take you through some of the latest engineering innovations to show how VMware can help you build this platform. Raghu already spoke about these challenges and the actions that we are taking around simplification, how we can use software-defined data center to help you simplify the process of building your private cloud, how we can extend from your private cloud seamlessly and securely into the public cloud, and how we empower your developers to build applications that can scale to millions of users and devices. So let's dive in. The technology foundation for this unified platform is the software-defined data center. Over the years, we continue to innovate in this space. We have the best in class compute virtualization, storage virtualization, and networking virtualization. And that certainly include my favorite, personal favorite storage platform, VirtualSAN. And all of this is managed by a layers of automation through our vRealize suite. So Raghu, you coined the terminology software-defined data center. You've been leading our effort. What is top of mind for you nowadays? Yan Bing, like you just said, we are making incredible progress in the individual components of the software defined data center. What our customers now need help with is pulling these together along with the underlying hardware and the switches okay. and so on mm -hmm. into a solution they can operate at scale in an easy manner. So easy and simplification. I have some exciting news to share. Uh, this morning, we announced the new software, the Evo SDC Manager. So this is a software that allows you to replicate build, rapidly build a complete SDC, and also provides automatic lifecycle management. And we not only can help you control your virtual resources, your logical resources, but also physical resources for the first time, such as top of rack switches in your data center. And the Evo SDC manager, along with the rest of the SDC components, form the Evo SDC. And that is the simplest, fastest way to develop, de deploy a complete SDDC at, at scale. So Evo SDDC is built on a scale-out architecture. You can start small with just eight servers. And as you need more capacity, you can scale out to multiple racks and one server at a time. All the physical racks are tied together by a resilient, scalable physical network. And a key benefit of Evo SDDC is it makes the installation and the configuration of software-defined data center extremely easy. What used to take weeks of effort plus team of experts now can be accomplished in just two hours. Just two hours and a few clicks at your fingertips. So it is that simple. So let's look at the scale 
uh, the, let's look at the scale number. Each rack can scale up to 1,000 VMs for IAS or 2,000 for VDI and more than 2 million IOPS. That is an impressive set of data by itself, but you can scale out more by just adding more racks. All of the resources are put together to form this virtual rack. And you may be asking, how can I best make use of this virtual rack of compute memory and storage resources? We've introduced a new concept called workload domain. So this is essentially private cloud instances that you can optimize towards the need of your workload, whether it's infrastructure as a service, VDI, or even big data. We can help you utilize VMware's best practice and optimize toward your service level agreement. And that's not all. All of this is protected by the power of NSX. You know, it's tied together by the NSX networking infrastructure and protected by our micro segmentation capability. That's great. So now once we've gotten this operational, mm -hmm. right, the real challenge is keeping the software up to date with uh, security patches and updates and so on. So that is, is a significant problem for our customers. Absolutely, that is a key challenge. And this is where EVO SDDC Manager brings the automatic lifecycle management in place. So take, uh, take a look at patching, for example. You know, we can help you automatically patch not only the full SDDC stack, but even the firmware and the switching that is part of it. And you can selectively patch just the workload domain that you're concerned of. And with vMotion, all of this can be handled without any interruption to your business. So it is that simple. So Evo indeed, with the STDC manager, provides a comprehensive platform to deploy and operate the data center, right? Absolutely. So now let's go to the second of our three areas, extend. Yeah, so let's uh, take a look at extend. This is really the heart of this critical puzzle. And by extension, you know, we need to allow you to seamlessly extend from private to public cloud and make the public cloud a true extension of your environment. And we're going to look at this particular challenge from four different angles. You know, often customers have to re-architect their applications just to adopt public cloud. And how we can help you synchronize your VM templates and applications automatically between private and public cloud. You know, how we can help you extend your network securely from on-prem to the public cloud, and how we allow you to move your workload with minimum or even no downtime, and how you manage everything through a single pane of glass. So we're going to dive in with a demo on synchronization. So what do you see on the screen is your familiar vSphere web, uh, web client. We're going to demonstrate a new capability called Content Library that allow you to automatically sync VM templates between data centers. So this capability was first introduced in vSphere 6.0 only for private data centers. Right. And we're extending that to work between private and public cloud. So here you can see I already have a number of templates in my environment. My developers just refresh our e-commerce app and I want to push that out to my vCloudAir public, uh, public cloud. So all I need to do, let me uh, import this new template. And then you can see this new template is now part of my content library. And to push it out to vCloudAir, let me switch over to the vCloudAir portal. And the content library portal, all I need to do is to click synchronize templates. And that template will be on its way from my private data center now to vCloudAir. Now you can see it is already appearing. That's great. So clearly, moving the data around is useful. Mm -hmm. However, the deeper benefit seems to be that you don't have to recompile, re-architect, repackage the VMs, none of that. Absolutely. That's a true benefit of That's the great. content library automatic synchronization. Okay, so in order to move this data, we still need a robust network underneath. What about that? That's true. That's, you know, networking is really the hard problem. This is the heavy lifting that needs to happen in order to form that seamless connection. 
So up until now, unfortunately, the industry has failed to come up with practical and financially feasible solution for all of you to use. We often have to resort to a set of complex hardware and software components just to stitch this solution together. And that is going to change today with VMware. We have introduced the VMware hybrid network services. So this is a set of services that are built on the power of NSX with advanced networking capabilities and also stretches between private and public cloud. So we've introduced a lot of state-of-the-art features that span across different layers of your networking protocol. You know, Direct Connect, VXLAN extension, VAN acceleration, encryption, and dynamic routing. The beauty of this is everything is built into software. So, and VMware is the only company who can do that. That's a massive step forward. So end-to-end -end software networking across the two clouds on either end. That's phenomenal. So now once we have this um, industrial strength network platform, mm -hmm. what can we do now that previously could not be done? Yep. So, you know, having this robust networking in place is like having the superhighway built. Yep. So let's move some traffic around. You know, what is your favorite way of moving your workload and virtual machines? You know, my personal favorite is vMotion. I was so curious about how vMotion worked. I applied for a job at VMware eight years ago just for that. So let me take you through a demo of how you can use vMotion to move the workload without any downtime. So let's start the demo. Here you're looking at the familiar vSphere web client again. I have some core services that are already running in my environment, including some of the LDAP services. And customers like MIT and many of you have critical services that you can't really interrupt to move them around. And for example, this particular LDAP4 VM has been running for over a thousand days. That's three years, almost three years. So of course we can't afford to shut it down to move it to public cloud. So what I'm going to do is to go back to my familiar user interface and I select migrate to vCardair. And I'm going to go through this familiar wizard. I choose vMotion based migration and I select my destination and uh, a few familiar steps and this particular virtual machine will be on its way from my private Santa Clara data center all the way to V Caldera's Virginia data center. So let's, let me get this straight. So it's the same vMotion that we're all familiar with for years, mm -hmm. except now with this, you're now able to accelerate, compress, yep. and move the VMs live from one location and one administrative domain yep. to another location in the Absolutely. cloud provider's domain. Is that what just happened? Yes, that's what just happened, Raghu. Now, what about the reverse? What if you want to move that back? What about the reverse? You know, having worked for Raghu for all these years, I know he changes his mind quickly. So this VM, you know, takes I can anywhere... change my mind about your bonus too, you know. <laughs> so this VMs probably take anywhere between 15 minutes to two hours to travel cross country. So should we wait until it finish? Probably not. So uh, unlike the Hotel California style uh, providers that you have out there, VMware does allow you to move your workload back and forth very easily. So let's pick a different VM just to demonstrate ca this capability. So I'm going to go back to my familiar user interface again. I'm going to pick a different VM this time. That is my LDAP 5 server that's already in my Virginia uh, data center and I make a connection to my on-premise ESXi, I make the connection to my data store, and this VM will be on its way from Virginia public cloud all the way to my private Santa Clara data center. So, you know, ladies and gentlemen, you know, you've just witnessed history. What we have shown here, <laughs> thank you. What we have shown here is the cross-cloud vMotion capability. And you are the first live audience to see this in this forum. And this is in tech preview today. And even though this looks very much like a similar experience as vMotion, 
you know, you may be wondering what is the secret sauce that make it cross cloud? So the secret sauce is the hybrid networking capability that we've talked about earlier. You know, with all the van acceleration and the encryption and the robustness of our underlying network, we have been able to accomplish this feat of moving our VM cross cloud and cross between private into public data centers. That's fantastic, Yanbing. So I can start to see how we are dissolving the Ooh. distinction between the private and public, turning it all into one cloud. That's right. Now, what about the management tools? Mm -hmm. Last year, we showed, we realized right up on the stage yep. that can deploy applications across private and public clouds. Mm -hmm. So what's new in management? Yeah, so we realized suite, as many of you are already familiar with, is the you know, unified management platform that can help you manage your private and public cloud together. So uh, last year, Raghu, you already spoke about the power of this platform. Our engineering team continue to innovate. And so let me give an example of a new capability we have. So this is called the Converge Infrastructure and Application Blueprint. For those of you who's familiar with Blueprint, you know that is a workflow automation that allow you to automatically provision applications into your cloud. And we've extended this capability to cover both private and public cloud. Obviously, you need to have visibility, not just into your private environment, but networking, database, infrastructure, application, and everything in between. So that is the power of the converged blueprint. And we've also further integrated vRealize operations and log inside into vRealize automation. So when you make your application provisioning decision, you, know, you can have the best information and best intelligence to help you make the best decision. That's great. So now we've simplified, extended, managed. We've got a unified hybrid cloud platform. Mm -hmm. Now we already run, run applications on this. Absolutely. So let's bring back Bill. Thank you, Roger. Thanks. Brilliant. Hi, Bill. Hey, Yan Bing. It's your slightly more decisive boss. Uh, <laughs> oops. Uh, right, great. So we've built the hybrid platform. Now our developers would like to create a mobile application, one of the use mm -hmm. cases I talked about earlier. Could we perhaps see if we could do that? Yes, let's take a look at that. I've been waiting for this moment for Bill to come up, not because he's a more decisive boss, but because talking about infrastructure is really, really a lot of hard work. So let's talk about applications and developers and mobile and all that good stuff. So what I'm going to take you through is a mobile application, my VMware. So this is VMware's very own customer experience application, and it's built on the power of vCloudAir with the help of mobile backend as a service. So this application doesn't allow you to order a camel, but I'm sure if uh, camel improves customer experience, we can consider incorporating that. So this application is built with the help of mobile backend as a service. So the beauty of mobile backend service is help you boost the developer productivity, offers a consistent set of microservices that really make your development process very easy. So let's dive in and see this in real action. We will start with a demo. So what you see on the screen is a console of a mobile backend service provided by one of our partners, uh, Kinvey. So you know, using this service, we can help you do a lot of the hard things. For example, identity management. So you can choose your own existing LDAP services, or you can integrate with VMware's identity management that's going to be introduced by Sanjay tomorrow, or even the social media uh, authentication. It also allows you to automatically connect to different type of data sources. You, know, you may already have a lot of data and applications that's already running in your enterprise environment, you know, in your private data center. So we allow you to automatically link to that. For example, I'm choosing my purchase requisition uh, data, uh, data source to link to that. And you know, all of this can be done without writing a single line of code. That's I'm, it. Yeah. I'm wondering if developers can still be called developers without writing code. Um, so after the development and the testing, when it's ready to push for the production, 
Again, you go through a very simple user interface, you know, you choose staging and push to production. And this mobile app will be on its way to run on our unified hybrid platform. It is that simple, Bill. Fantastic, Yanping. So basically, your developers have used a third-party uh, capability we've integrated with the hybrid platform, created a mobile application, linked it securely to data that was living on-premises yep. in their private cloud environment, and Bob's your uncle, it's up and running. Yep. That's what you've just seen. So, um, you know, there you have it. A complete end-to-end -end unified hybrid platform. So this is the first ever one cloud architecture that is in the industry. So let me do some recap. I started with the process of simplifying. You know, how SDDC can help you simplify the process to get to private cloud. And how the newly introduced EVO SDDC manager can help you further accelerate that process. We've also launched a lot of new capabilities and new releases across the entire stack of SDDC. Then we spoke about extent and how we can help you synchronize your VM templates across private and public cloud and how we can use the power of hybrid network services to make the seamless and secure connection and how we can use vMotion, cross-cloud vMotion to move workload and then manage everything through a single pane of glass that is vRealize Suite. In the end, we show you the mobile backend as a service and how that can help you boost the productivity of building mobile applications. You know, it gave me great pleasure to showcase some of these innovations in front of all of you. Do spend time in the hands-on labs, check out these capabilities and interact with VMware engineers and have a great VMware. And go virtual, Sam. Thank you, Yuan Bing. Tremendous job. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Yuan Bing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow! Didn't I say it was amazing? Did you see cross-cloud vMotion? Unbelievable. Wow! Yeah, yeah, that's worth another round of applause right there. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So, let me just summarize this section on behalf of Yan Bing, Ragu, and I. Hopefully what we've done here is provided you with a completely new way to think about your cloud strategy. The future of applications is hybrid applications, and you're going to need a hybrid platform. I hope you've also learned that you do have some very real hybrid use cases today. You've already got a number of the building blocks in place, so I'd encourage you to use your time at VMworld this year to go and discover a lot more about the capabilities that VMware offers the entire ecosystem of partners that are also now building capabilities to augment the platform and discover more about some of the amazing business challenges that customers are already solving with this platform. Talking of really tough business challenges, we all know that getting your mission critical applications like SAP to run really effectively in the cloud is a tough challenge. Well, a company that recently joined the EMC Federation of Companies has absolutely solved that problem. And it gives me great pleasure to introduce the CEO of Virtustream, who's going to share that vision, Mr. Rodney Rogers. Thank you, Rodney. Excellent. Awesome. Awesome. It's an awesome feeling to be here today as the CEO of EMC's newest federation company. And this is a path that we chose uh, ultimately because of our deep belief in the unified hybrid cloud vision that Bill and Ragu just recently articulated this morning. And our belief that Virtustream can play a critical role in helping fulfill that vision in our methods of running IO intensive mission critical applications in the cloud. So let's talk a little bit about who we are and what we do. So Virtustream is a relatively young company. Uh, my co-founder, Kevin Reed, and I conceived and formed the company in early 2009. Shortly thereafter, we brought into our founders fold two early VCDX, VMware VCDX architects, numbers 17 and 18, Sean Jennings and Matt Thur, uh, respectively. And then shortly after that, we brought in a, uh, a critical infrastructure architect to help us uh, think through and conceive the software that would ultimately run this platform and be at the core of our invention. 
Our initial motivation was to solve a problem that we didn't see many people attempting to solve, and that was applying modern multi-tenant cloud architectures to running these IO intensive mission critical applications in the cloud. These are the spinal fluid types of apps that run the core order through cache functions of enterprise today. And these applications are tough. They will place a highly burdensome, uh, 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 they, will, they will be burdensome into the underlying infrastructure as it relates to the memory requirements to run those apps. You generally cannot take advantage of embedded infrastructure triggers, uh, infrastructure aware triggers in those apps. And ultimately, resiliency is not addressed at the application level. So we had our work cut out for it. We cut out for us. We had to essentially get around all of those things while still adhering to the principles of building a modern cloud and architecture that had all the resiliency, all the automation, and all the orchestration that you'd find out in the public cloud marketplace today. So we built Extreme, our cloud management software. It resides as an abstraction above the virtual machine management layer in the infrastructure as a service stack. So we, our IPAs connect with vCenter. At, at, we use that cloud management platform to run our own infrastructure as a service offering in the North America and Western Europe predominantly. And we also make it available to enterprises for private cloud enablement and to service providers that want to run this type of enterprise class cloud service. And I would say we punched well above our weight as a young company. We were recently ranked as the number one hosted private cloud provider in Forrester's recent wave report. And we've been featured prominently in the Gartner Magic Quadrant uh, cloud infrastructure as a service report highlighting the top 15 cloud providers. One of the few independent uh, companies in that, at least we were. So I'm gonna just scratch the surface of our technology here. Uh, a little bit. I would encourage you to visit our booth today and to access our online materials to learn a bit, little bit more. But virtual machines underpin the tonnage of all the major public cloud services out there today. Virtual machines are sized based upon the peak application workload requirement of the apps that will run those virtual machines and the type of attribute, whether it's processing speed or memory that the apps will require that will run on that virtual machine estate. And what that does is it creates a situation where there is a natural headroom due to that peak requirement sizing in the VM itself. And it's very, very difficult to control the individual attributes of compute, RAM, storage, IOP commits, bandwidth. What we did to solve that problem is we essentially diffused the definitional bounds of virtual machines and manage environments that we price and size to the aggregate of the individual attribute requirement of compute, RAM, storage IOP commits, and intracloud network bandwidth commits, or the bandwidth that runs inside the DC. We then put a logical unit of work around uh, those attributes uh, called a micro VM. And the ratios between the attributes is something that we've sized that specifically for our target mission critical application use case over literally tens of millions of virtualized workloads. We then put those micro VMs in customer pools that are completely dynamic. In other words, they can ex expand and contract as necessary. And we make any of the individual attribute available to any workload that's running over that customer pool, assign quality of service, policies to that customer pool. And what it allows us to do fundamentally is run in a, 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 an ultra efficient hardware estate and ultimately control each one of the individual attributes to ensure that in a multi-tenant architecture, we don't have resource contention on the critical attribute required to run that particular application. Another way to look at this, think of the outside dotted lines, a cluster of hardware, the inside dotted lines as physical servers. As you layer virtual machines onto your infrastructure, those virtual machines will come in various shapes, sizes, uh, based upon what the critical requirement is. If you need processing speeds, it'll be CPU. If you need uh, uh, RAM, it'll be memory and the like. And again, what our software does is diffuses and eliminate the bounds of both not only the hardware that the, the virtual machines are running on, but the actual virtual machines themselves. And then what we do is three things. We implement and run on an iterative basis our own bin packing algorithms to optimize the hardware estate, bring up the memory utilization of the underlying hosts that are in the infrastructure environment itself. The second thing that we do is run predictive algorithms to predict the future usage on hosts in our hardware estate. 
based upon the behavioral characteristics of the workloads running uh, uh, for our customers in our hardware estate. And then lastly, our more granular input allows us to reduce the memory share settings at the hypervisor, thus allowing us to get higher memory page utilization on what is already a highly utilized host. What this does is it allows us through software to neutralize what our competitors may do, be doing in terms of procurement stale. And it also allows us to control that critical attribute of IOPS, which is so important to run these mission critical apps in the cloud. So we've talked about the sort of three, or we would want to talk about the three key pillars of uh, the cloud performance automation security. We've largely talked about the performance piece. Again, the ability to control I.O. gives us the ability to control throughput, which gives us the ability to actually control application latency on a cloud. So you go to a Fortune 500 CIO and say you can run your heavyweight SAP applications in production in our cloud and we'll actually guarantee beyond just the availability of the infrastructure, but we'll guarantee how that app runs in our cloud. It's extraordinary and it's been one of the things that's led to our commercial success. One of the things we've also done is we've addressed the application landscape automation requirements. These three-tier architecture applications are constantly in need of synchronizing maintenance and versioning for the OS, the database, and the underlying application itself. And we've written a macro orchestrator on top of the Apache Brooklyn project that allows us to essentially automate through a digital library of, of automation templates these functions. So you can not only run a much more efficient hardware estate, but it requires less labor to manage that hardware estate, which is quite cool. And then lastly, we have been recognized as the only cloud service provider in Gartner's uh, Magic Quadrant that was rated a five out of five for the last three years in a row on security and compliance. And beyond doing the table stakes stuff like role-based access and two-factor authentication and tenant isolation, we do things like employing Intel's trusted execution technology so we perform attestation at the BIOS level of the hardware. This not only allows us to establish a route of trust for that hardware, but it also gives us the ability to execute through uh, sophisticated geofencing and geopolicy uh, within our node. And then finally, we are able to draw in sensor-based data to turn point-in-time compliance adherence and security vulnerability into sort of an ongoing automated process. So SAP has been a long time partner of ours. We were recognized in 2011 for running the first full business suite in production on a multi-tenant cloud. 2011, 2012, we brought their global demo landscapes onto our cloud. 2013 saw SAP make a significant investment in Virtustream. And today we're announcing that we're one of only three companies in the world that has been awarded premium HEC supplier status, largely for all the reasons I just uh, discussed through this presentation. So finally, it is uh, really exciting for us today to, to be a part of this and to be a critical component in that unified hybrid cloud vision. Please stay tuned. VirtuStream is going to have a number of really exciting announcements in the next couple of months. And with that, I thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome VMware's Chief Technology and Chief Development Officer, Ray O'Farrell. Good morning, everybody. You have to admit that cross-cloud vMotion, that's pretty cool. We're going to talk about something different here, that we're going to focus on applications. When Carl came out today, he was surrounded by I guess a dancing swarm of applications or something like that. That's a phrase you never want to hear uttered at VMworld. But in some ways, we should have kept that, that dancing swarm of applications here because we are going to talk about cloud native applications. And what is specific about cloud native applications? Well, broadly speaking, they are the applications which the heart of many of the digital transformation that companies go through. These applications typically leverage cloud infrastructure. They leverage cloud frameworks. And quite often, they focus very much on a distributed and highly resilient type of application. One of the things that we notice about these applications is they are often developed in-house. And they are developed in-house by developers living in a line of business outside of IT. And that line of business is very focused on a very specific business outcome. Quite often, it cuts right to the core of the competitive nature of the organization itself. 
And because it is focused on such a competitive outcome, there is a constant demand to change those applications, update them, make sure that they react to what's going in the market. And that agility and that speed of change triggers these developers to leverage new technologies in this space, microservices and container-based technologies. Quite often when we meet with CIOs and IT experts, they will tell us that they have some unique challenges managing and leveraging the opportunity of these new type of cloud native applications. And when you think about that, that's not particularly unexpected. As a CIO and as an IT leader, you are responsible for managing the IT and digital assets of an organization. You worry about efficiency, you worry about security, you worry about compliance. Meanwhile, you have these developers in a line of business who want to move extremely fast and they want to demand an agility and they want to change their software very often and you get a conflict between these two things. So quite often you come to us and you will say, what can we do to help here? How can we allow you to bridge these two different methodologies of getting software out there? One which is very traditional based but very compliant and secure and one which wants to leverage these new cloud native applications. At VMware, we have an organization, an engineering organization, uh, within the office of the CTO, focused specifically on driving cloud-native applications. And who better to tell us about what we're doing in this space would be Mr. Kit Colbert, who I'd like to invite on stage and right now. Kit, uh, Hi, Kate. How are you doing? Good, man. How are you? I'm How's good. How's the new CTO gig treating you? Well, I thought I'd be able to, you know, hang out a while for a couple of weeks, and here I am in front of 20,000 of our most important customers. I know. It's amazing. CTOs actually have to do work, apparently, right? Yes, it's shocking. I mean, apparently. So, Kate, one point that I didn't emphasize before you came out is that VMware is looking at two approaches to this problem. Uh, one which is very much focused on our existing infrastructure and the ability to extend the existing infrastructure to allow IT organizations to leverage that infrastructure and really take advantage of the new opportunities of cloud native applications. And the other approach is a completely new platform. And that platform is focused very much on use of containers and focused specifically on cloud native applications. Right. So containers comes up over and over again in these yeah. conversations. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I'm gonna sure. hand you the clicker. Oh, CTO thanks. should never go CTO for the CTO power, I know. Okay, yeah, let's talk a little about containers, right? So we're seeing a lot of interest in containers from developers and development organizations. And the reason is that it makes it super easy to package up your application and move quickly through that application development life cycle. So you talk about coding on your laptop, pushing that out to a staging environment to do testing, and then finally into production to deliver that to customers. So we see with containers a huge opportunity for our customers and for businesses in general to really drive business agility. So this new technology, however, when blended with your existing way of managing IT, is likely to introduce some interesting management challenges. Yes. Can you show us a demo here which outlines some of those challenges? And then let's take a look at some of the opportunities we have to address them. Definitely, yeah, so there are some challenges here. Let's take a look at the demo. So what we're looking at here is a developer on their laptop, on the command line, leveraging Docker to provision an application that they've built out. Now as you can see, the power of containers here is really great because in just one command, they can provision this multi-component application. And when we see the, the PS command here, we can actually see that there's five containers that, that are part of this application. Now, if we switch over to the web browser here, we can actually see what that application is. In this case, it's actually a web app, a session builder app. Looks like you've got an interesting talk. Yeah, you're there, not Ray. getting free beer, just forget oh, it. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, okay, but let's switch over to the VI admin's point of view. Now, remember, the developer provisioned five containers, but as you can see here, the VI admin doesn't see those containers. They only see two VMs here, and that's the fundamental issue. So what I'm seeing here is, uh, I guess, an opportunity to have greater management when it comes to using containers in our existing infrastructure. We see some challenges, I guess, with the way that the infrastructure is supplied today and deployed today. Can we go back to the slides, please? So what we see here is that typically when somebody deploys containers in a virtual machine, those containers are isolated to within that virtual machine. 
The IT organization has no real knowledge about what's going on. There's a challenge of partial visibility here. They're unable to see the containers, they just see the VMs. The developers, of course, want to completely manage these applications using frameworks which manage the VMs directly. But this is not just a management challenge. It also introduces a potential security challenge because it is very difficult to manage what you cannot see. And so this visibility leads to a limited security stance on behalf of IT. Right, and I think there's also a challenge around tooling. Again, all the tools that have been built out and integrated into vSphere focus on VMs. So these tools can't see or manage the containers running inside of those VMs. So what, we've, what we are going to look at here is a new product or an extension of our existing technology called the vSphere Integrated Containers. And what this allows us to do is attack this challenge of visibility and management of containers within the existing infrastructure. Yeah. Can, can you tell us how this works? Yeah, we're really excited about vSphere Integrated Containers because what we're trying to do here is bring together the best of both worlds. We're trying to give developers the speed and portability and agility that they want from containers while at the same time providing IT ops with the security security, the visibility, and the management that they require to run these applications in production. And we're doing that by making containers first-class citizens on vSphere. That means that you can manage both traditional applications inside of VMs and next-generation applications inside of containers side-by-side, -side, fully consistently on one platform. So what happens under the hood here? Yeah, let's dive in and take a look at how this works. So as we saw in the previous demo, today we have the VIM and provisioning a VM to a developer. That VM is then, it, they install a container engine inside of it, and then they can provision containers inside of that VM. Now this is essentially the container host we have here in that VM. Now what we're doing with vSphere integrated containers is taking a little bit of a different approach. We're actually deconstructing and virtualizing the container host and deconstructing that underlying VM. So we take out the common things like the container uh, engine and Linux and and conceptually embed those inside of vSphere. And what that enables us to do is a one-to-one -one mapping between containers and VMs, one container per VM. This means that the container is now the VM, the VM is the container, and that gives us all these great management capabilities that we just mentioned. So can you repeat the same demo that we saw earlier and see how vSphere integrated containers changes the view from the IT administrator from a management point of view? Yeah, let's jump into a demo and check that out. Again, the same scenario as you just mentioned as before. The difference now is that ahead of time, the VI admin will go in and set up something called a virtual container host. Again, as I said, we're virtualizing that container host, and so now the VI admin can explicitly create one. Now what this is under the covers is just a resource pool in vCenter. Again, you can put all the normal SLAs and everything else that you do with resource pools. The one thing we do do additionally is also provision a container engine inside that resource pool. In this case, it's a Docker engine. So let's jump back over to the developer's point of view. Now here we go again, same workflow as before that this developer is using. Absolutely no changes, and that's I think really the power here, is they don't need to know vSphere is behind the scenes. They can do their normal workflow using the tools that they prefer. Okay, so now that the, the application is up and running, so let's jump back over to vSphere. Now before, we only saw two VMs here, but now with vSphere integrated containers, as you see, we actually see all five of the containers that developer provisioned. We can get information about them, but moreover, we can also dive into the VMs that are backing those containers. And as you can see, these are fully fledged VMs. They have all the tooling and integration that you would expect. In fact, this, this particular VM here is also actually using both NSX and virtual SAN. But it gets better. You can drill in, you can get performance data. Again, this is just a VM in vSphere, so anything you can do to vSphere now works on these containers. I mean, think about the 50,000 ecosystem partners we have, all the tooling and technology they've built, the hundreds of thousands of users, many of you in the audience, and the millions of scripts that you've collectively written. All that stuff now just works with containers. That's the power of vSphere integrated containers, and that's something that only VMware can do. So one can see how this improves the basic management concept when it comes to leveraging containers within a vSphere environment. However, what resonates with me is some of the security implications of what you have just seen. When you deploy containers today in a cloud environment, a virtualized environment, those containers typically reside within a single VM. There may be groups of them, but there's multiple containers within a single VM. If one of those containers should become compromised in some way, the other containers rely on the OS level of isolation to protect themselves. 
Where, however, in this new product with vSphere integrated containers, rather than relying on the OS level of protection, they're able to rely on the robust protection associated with virtual machines that you've come to trust for many, dec sorry, for many years with VMware technologies. Right, that's a really good point. But I think another question I often hear from folks is the question around efficiency. You know, they ask, hey, wait a second, is a one container per VM model actually efficient? The answer is absolutely yes, and it's because of a lot of the innovations that we've been driving in this space. So the first one I want to talk about is something called Photon OS. This is a lightweight, container-optimized Linux distro from VMware that we announced and released a few months back. Now, particular to vSphere integrated containers, this thing's only about 25 megabytes in size, so very, very compact and lightweight. The second piece is something called Instant Clone. We announced this last year at VMworld and called it Project Fargo then. Now the power of Instant Clone is that you can get a new powered on virtual machine ready to go in less than a second. And, and that virtual machine initially has no memory overhead. So very quick, very lightweight. Now when you add these two together, you get a new kind of virtualization, a lighter weight kind of virtualization. We call it just enough virtualization. You get all the security, the isolation, and the oper operational benefits of virtualization, while at the same time getting all of the portability, speed, and agility benefits of containers. Okay, so let's hear from what some of our customers think about this new technology. We're going to run a video from Keith Collins, the CIO of SAS. I'm at the CEO at SAS. We are the world's leading provider of analytics. And of course, in today's world, the competitive space around analytics is, of course, exploding. And our challenge is to make sure that we're leading that challenge, uh, meeting it head on, uh, accelerating to what our customers are asking us to do. We're like every other company, we're evolving. Some of our software is traditional type of three-tier architecture design that's been uh, prevalent. And our new architectures, of course, are what you would call cloud-native. Well, we've been actively participating with the VMware team to bring the vision to life, to make sure that we can actually follow this cloud-native design all the way from our R&D to what we're doing for our hosted customers. Um, we see the vision. Uh, we're working together with you on know, making the, the vision come to life. Okay, right. Kit, can you give us a summary of what exactly is vSphere Integrated Containers? Just sure. summarize where we are at this point. Yeah, well, I really like you know, what Keith was talking about there, about this you know, transition, this, this journey they were on toward a cloud-native future. And I think that's exactly what vSphere Integrated Containers provides. Again, it gives you the ability to run both traditional applications inside of VMs, as well as cloud-native applications inside of containers, and to do that side-by-side, -side, fully consistently, all on a single platform. Okay, I mentioned at the beginning of this presentation that we had two approaches when it comes to enabling cloud native uh, applications and enabling you to execute and leverage them. The first approach we've heard about, that is the extension of existing vSphere technologies, allowing you to leverage those technologies and leverage the large ecosystem around those technologies as well. Now we're going to look at a new platform which is focused specifically for executing cloud native container based applications. So let's consider for a moment that I want to develop a software as a service application. As a developer, I want to make sure it is awesome. It's an awesome, big, giant, scalable application. What are the things that I need to think about? I need to think about the scalability of that application. I want to be able to work with millions of instances. I am also focused on API-driven management. How else can I manage something of this awesomeness and scale? I will probably decide to use containers. I've got the luxury of doing that because I'm developing this new cloud native application. And I also will insist that it's simple to run and deploy. And for this, there is a new platform coming from VMware, and this is called the VMware Photon Platform. Yeah, we're really excited about the Photon Platform. This is a new scalable infrastructure stack from VMware that is built and optimized for cloud native applications. Now, as you point out, Ray, a lot of the folks that are driving this are really looking for an API-centric model. So this is exactly how we built it, API-first, DevOps type of design. Also, we, of course, had multi-tenant isolation and security built in top to bottom. And finally, you talk about this notion of scale. And when you start scaling up to very large levels, it's very easy for complexity to creep in. So we've been very focused on making this super simple, targeted feature set, very easy to run at high scale with good security. So as we did in the case when we discussed the vSphere integrated container platform, once again, can you dive in here and give us an idea of what's going on under the hood? Sure. 
So to be very clear, you know, this is a different stack from vSphere. However, it takes some of the components from vSphere to build it out. So there's two primary components inside of Photon Platform, the first of which is called Photon Machine. This is a compute host, a thing you install on your physical machines. Now this actually takes the core virtualization engine, the microvisor, if you will, from ESX. And it combines that with our Linux distro, Photon OS. Really what we see Photon Machine being is the convergence of the hypervisor and a Linux OS to a lightweight, very secure package that you install on your physical hosts. Now the second piece of this is Photon Controller. This is a distributed multi-tenant control plane. And again, think about this. You're gonna have thousands or maybe tens of thousands of Photon Machine instances out there. You need a very scalable framework in order to be able to manage all that and provision to all that simultaneously, hundreds of thousands or maybe millions of containers. This is exactly what Photon Controller does. The great part about it, no single point of failure, but it does expose a single logical API endpoint. So very, very easy to use. So the Photon platform consisting of the Photon machine and the Photon controller has a very particular design point. We wanted to make sure that it sits in the stack right at the point that still allows you the flexibility to leverage the open stack frameworks and the data platform, I'm sorry, the open frameworks and the data platforms that are used to using for deploying your cloud native applications. So frameworks such as Cloud Foundry, Docker, and Mesos, all of those can still be used with the Photon platform. Right, I think it's really important that we're seeing increased usage of this uh, within our businesses and customers and really seeing these platforms driving forward application development. So here we wanna jump into a demo, but before we actually get into the demo itself, I wanna walk through a slide that kind of talks about what it is that we'll be showing. We talked about this big, awesome, scalable application. And the reality is, in order to build that, you have to have multiple application teams, each working independently toward you know, these various components. Now, each of those teams are gonna choose frameworks themselves based on their needs, and this all needs to run on top of Photon Platform in a very, very scalable way. Okay, so with that in mind, let's actually jump into the demo. Now, what you're looking at here is the Photon Platform Cloud Admin UI. As you can see, there's about a thousand hosts that Photon Platform is aggregating over and really taking all those resources and creating a giant logical pool of compute, network, and storage. It can then deliver those resources out to the tenants, again, the lines of business and the development organizations we were just talking about. So you can see here we have three tenants. Let's check out the first one here, the recommendation engine. Now these folks have chosen to use Mesos to build out their component. Now I think one of the key points here is that we're not focused on individual containers. You just can't do that when you're talking about hundreds of thousands of containers, right? Instead you focus on the frameworks and what helps you get greater and greater scale. So these folks are using Mesos, that's great. Let's go to the next tenant. Now we see that in this tenant, these guys have actually chosen Kubernetes. Now let's take a deeper look at how they can actually leverage Photon Platform and use Kubernetes here. So now we're switching over from the cloud admin view to more of the developer or line of business point of view. Now you can see what they're doing here is they're using a single command to actually provision a new Kubernetes instance. So keep in mind that the underlying infrastructure here is VM based, but ideally these folks don't need to interact with VMs. They interact with the clustering frameworks that they choose to use. And you can see here we've already provisioned it. We can check on the status of it and see that this Kubernetes deployment is ready to go. So very, very easy. Now we can go and provision an application to it. So this is, again, trying to optimize the workflow for these developers and development organizations. Now we go back into the Photon Platform UI here. We can see when we update it that, uh, oh, I'm sorry, we have all of our recommendation engines here. Okay, so let's go back and refresh the screen here and we can see uh, multiple Kubernetes nodes have been deployed. That's great. So let's go to our third tenant. Now on the third tenant, what we have is them using Pivotal Cloud Foundry, really the premier structured application platform. So let's jump in and see what these developers are doing from their point of view. So again, they can talk to Cloud Foundry and see the number of applications they're running. They've got one app here, it's got about 10 instances. This app is moving from dev test into production, so they wanna dramatically scale that up by about 1,000 instances. So again, with a single command, it's very easy. Cloud Foundry will go off and start doing that, talking to Photon Platform underneath to rapidly scale out this lightweight form of virtualization, which again provides all the security benefits, operational benefits we just mentioned, while at the same time, the sort of agility that we're seeing here. So this is essentially Photon Platform, enabling multiple application and development teams to very rapidly build out their applications in a safe, secure, and scalable manner. So how does one get hold of the Photon Platform? Well, we have three distribution options. Number one, we will be making the Photon Controller available as open source. 
And if you recall, the Photon Controller is the key infrastructure management layer at the heart of the Photon Platform. The Photon Platform itself will be available from VMware under subscription. This is a complete platform, Photon Machine, Photon Controller brought together. And thirdly, we're missing one here. Uh, yep, sorry. <laughs> sorry. And thirdly, we are going to offer an integrated bundle between Cloud Foundry and the Photon platform. This is a unique bundle because it allows you to operate and develop these applications all the way from the very highest level of a pass all the way down to this much, much closer and deep management of the underlying infrastructure. Yeah, this is an announcement we're particularly excited about. As I said before, Pivotal Cloud Foundry is the premier structured application platform, and we think it's the best way for enterprises to build and run their cloud native applications. So we're very excited to announce this industry first end-to-end -end cloud native platform, tackling both the application side and the infrastructure side seamlessly integrated. So okay. let's bring it so back together. We want to bring right? it back together. We've spoken about two separate platforms, the uh, vSphere integrated platform, which basically allows to leverage to a large degree what you've got and the huge ecosystem that's there, and then the cloud native platform, which is new. But can you compare the two, please? Yeah, I mean, just at a very high level, and to keep it very, very simple, what we're focused on with vSphere integrated containers and vSphere is really about enabling the best of both worlds, managing traditional applications inside of VMs and cloud native applications inside of containers side by side. For some customers, they're looking at running only containers in these greenfield data centers and very high-scale software-as-a-service type applications. And for them, that's exactly what we created Photon Platform for. So really, this is about giving our customers options and enabling them, in many cases, to actually use both technologies, the right tool for the right job. So speaking of options, at the, when I spoke about the Photon Platform, I indicated the focus that we had on supporting the flexible frameworks on top of that platform. The same equally applies, obviously, to the vSphere integrated container platform. And in fact, to a large degree, you get to leverage a huge amount of the existing ecosystem which exists around VMware products. So I think, you know, one thing you mentioned about the betas, right? And I think that's something I'm sure a lot of people are very interested in. So if you are, please reach out to your VMware account team to get more information. Now, there's a tremendous amount of cloud-native activity happening here at VMworld this week. There's so much, in fact, we were trying to track it all, so we actually put together a little field guide for you to make sure you know where to go and when. So this is the, the right thing to go check out. Finally, we're doing something kind of fun and innovative with vSphere integrated containers. We're leveraging it to run Docker and MS-DOS and old DOS games like Prince of Persia. So go give this thing a uh, try. It's in the hang space in Moscone West. And I think one other point I wanted to make here is that we've talked about a lot of really cool new technologies uh, over the past hour and a half or so. And you know, we're just a few people up here on stage, but really there's a huge team of engineers that are behind all of this. So I'd really like to take a moment and actually thank the engineering teams for de delivering everything that they have. Yes. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> huge effort. Thank you, Kit. So let's wrap up here. Um, so in the early part of the session, Carl came in and he spoke about one cloud, any application, any device. The VMware vision to bring all of these things together. Later on, we had Raghu and Bill and Yan Bing discuss the VMware unified hybrid cloud and why that is the best place to run your applications. Kate and I have just spoken about the technologies we can bring to bear to run your cloud native applications. However, to complete the whole VMware vision, you need to come to the keynotes tomorrow. And please remember, they start at nine o'clock tomorrow. And there you'll learn about how VMware is the best place to deliver these applications, particularly into the mobile space. And also, we have the best technologies to secure these applications. The end of that keynote, Pat Gelsinger, the CTO of VMware, will also present a very forward-looking view of where he thinks this industry is going. So with that, thank you very much, and have a great VMworld.